<laughs> so I'm having a chat with Martin of Boys Like Girls. How are you? So good, man. I couldn't be better. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate ah, it. Pleasure is all mine. Now, the uh, the big news is that you are back, starting to release new music, and we've just started to play your latest single, Language. What can you tell us about the single, first of all? Oh, amazing, man. Thank you for supporting that. I, I appreciate it. Um, Man, it was really fun making this. It was one of the hardest songs that um, on a production end that I've ever done. We ended up, you know, kind of like we, we felt that the song was really important and kind of like, you know, honored like where we came from sonically and also sort of explored some new territory. And so we spent a lot of time making sure the production was great. And um, it was it was one where you're kind of like, you know, you record once and you throw it out because, you know, it can be better. And then you record it again, you throw it out and you kind of like. Then you take the first one again. You realize the first one was actually great. You re-record it. Then you throw that out. And then you do it all over again. And we're proud with where it's uh, where it ended up. I think when you go away for a dozen years, and um, and then you're coming back in kind of hot, and you know, you and the boys are excited. You want to make sure mm -hmm. you put your best foot forward. So it's yeah. been a it's been a feat making this record, but it's really fun. We're almost there. So like the record's almost done. I have about a I have about a week of work left and we're definitely up against the deadline good good can't wait to to hear it and with record number four on the way for you guys how's this record sounding in comparison to the to your previous three you know i everything's completely completely different we're obviously a lot older it's been a really long time since we put out those first two records specifically the third one had like a little bit of a different sound um so you know definitely more kind of dipping back in I, it's you know it's interesting it's been there's a version of this like it's like dipping back into old catalog songs like some of the songs were started a really really long time ago mm. or they were done like in 2014 and you know we weren't ready to make a record yet but it was really clear that like this is probably a boys like girls song and i don't know if we're ever gonna make a record but we should save this for that. And so they it got put aside. So, you know, I would say that it's much like, you know, when you write your first record, like that you kind of have your whole life to create it, you know, mm -hmm. it's like you, whatever you, you know, some songs you wrote when you're 16, some songs you wrote in the studio and like everything along the way. And then this is a little bit of kind of the same thing. Um, and, you know, I think for a while you, try to sound like like i know when we made our second record the love drunk record it was really a you know i love that record but it was a representation of what we thought people wanted to hear from us you know it's like you get put in a box and then you decide i'm gonna give that thing and this is kind of like we've been i didn't really have any expectations that anybody would even care it's been mm. so long and we've been away from what it was for so long that it was just, you know, kind of about making things that we thought was great and we wanted to play and, you know, just getting back in the room with your best friends and, and trying to do something that was, that was great, you know, um, and just do it with a band, do it like as the band and, and, uh, and kind of find, find it, it's finding its way. It's interesting. I'm hearing like, I'm seeing a lot of people draw similarities to older stuff and it's like, it ends up, it's, ends up being like collaborating with your 19 year old self, you know, you, you kind of wash him away for a bit and then, um, you know, you have to make peace with him. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. yeah absolutely. And it's obviously now been over 10 years since the last record. What made you guys get back together to do this and work on record four? You know, we, um, we never kind of, it's interesting. A lot of people kind of thought we broke up or, or, or went away i think it was more it was more like we 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 stayed best friends and we you know had holiday at each other's family's houses and watched you know american football every sunday together and um and i would say every time we hang out we hung out for the last 12 years we would talk about um how we wanted to make a record and how that mm. was important and the timing never really felt good and um we were working on some music right before the pandemic and uh we canceled like a tour and we were kind of like gonna do this australia like tour in australia and southeast asia to see like does this still feel good do we want to play these shows and um 
we ended up doing it rescheduled for a couple of years later after the pandemic. And when we got out there, it was really clear that all of us really missed playing together. And it was important to, it was important to not just put out a song or do a leg, a kind of a, like a legacy nostalgia tour, but it was important that we go all the way. If we yeah. were going to do it, we were going to like make a full new record, make two full new records and, and just kind of like do it again. Like we're, you know, 19 again. Um, and uh, you know, everybody kind of doubled down. Yeah. Yeah. Great to hear. And uh, people will want to see you play these tracks live i'm sure you're uh you're out across the states later this year for uh for a good couple of months i bet you can't wait to be touring again honestly it's you forget like i i, I do a lot of music production and writing for other people right mm. and so you kind of you stay in the cage for long enough and you know you forget that like oh right this this human interaction where you look out and and you're you're finally performing is literally the one it's the one hour of time in the day that i actually began to make music as a kid for like mm. it was for this it's for this true extension like when you're when you're little and you're like you know rocking guitar like looking at yourself in the mirror you're not thinking like oh, i really want to sit in a cage and make music for other people you're like no i want to take a strut like i want to get out there and i want to strut it out and mm -hmm. i want to uh and I want to play the songs live. So, dude, I'm I'm pumped. You know, we we're we're doing rehearsals really early. We're gonna start them here on the on July 23rd, and like, you know, incorporate the new songs and um, try to formulate how we want to play the old stuff um, and play a lot of the old stuff. And so it's uh it's good. Everybody's really excited. Everybody's kind of gung ho to go. Yeah, good. And people want to see you over here as well in in the UK, in Europe, Australia as well. I know you've tried to get back to as well. What's the what's the yep. plan for touring the rest of the world? So we have um we have dates booked for over there. Um, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm allowed to announce it on your show, but uh, <laughs> we're definitely coming over um spring of next year um for sure and. Uh, I'm, we're we're kind of in court we're kind of working on the um the europe portion of that and australia kind of as we speak like it's kind of like lot like a live lava flow in the in the emails like figuring out exactly how we're going to get it done but um mm. yeah we're gonna we're gonna try to hit it all we're gonna we're gonna try to do everywhere for sure good, good. can't wait for that and you uh you touched on that you've written and produced other artists over the years they include ariana grande taylor swift jason deruda how, how do these kind of writing collaborations and production work kind of how does that all come about for you how does that happen i mean i started when we were still like really hot and heavy doing um boys like girls stuff i think you know i grew up doing musical theater so like playing mm -hmm. other characters was always something that was really exciting to me and you know you put that away when you kind of start a band and and um i think you know some of it like when 2010 rolled around there was you know sort of like this people were really a little less interested in hearing rock bands for a little while and uh it felt like almost like an important survival tactic that it was mm -hmm. like if i'm going to continue making music and that's going to be my career like i get to hum melodies for a living and like not yeah. get a real job um I'm, I'm probably going to have to figure out certain ways to do it that don't involve, you know, um, you know, busting my crotch out on tour kind of like 11 months a year. And, um, you know, it wasn't always, it wasn't always like immediately you're in the room with like, you know, the biggest names in music, but mm. you know, like the, there's a grind for that too. I think like, you know, at the beginning of that, there were like, you know, two to four really dry years where I was sort of just like writing songs that weren't coming out. And then, all of a sudden it you you, you kind of get one and much like being like um much like being like when when you're an artist and you're you're writing this great music but not many people know that yet and you haven't kind of pro proven your your skill it sort of just sits there and then you have one song that works and all of a sudden they all start working um it's similar i you know i got uh i got i got really fortunate that um and people started uh people started wanting to get in the studio with me and uh, it was a fun run for a really long time. Yeah. And do, is it the artists come to you and say they want you to write for them or do you write a song and then put the feelers out to see who wants it? How does it tend to work? It's different for every song. I would say the way that I like collaborating the most is like, 
it's like an arranged marriage, right? You like meet this artist in the studio. It's like speed dating. You meet the artist in the studio. You talk about what they're doing. You listen to a bunch of references and then you kind of try to get inside their skin and uh, you write the song with them mm -hmm. and then, you know, kind of you produce it, record their vocal and sort of take it from, you know, the idea stage all the way to what you'd hear on the radio. Um, you know, sometimes when an artist isn't as much of a writer or scheduling wise, they can't, you know, there's there's finished songs, but I, I like collaborating with artists. I think my strength is in that a little bit more. I'm, mm. you know, it's like, I don't know if it's because I'm like a crazy person whisper whisperer or, you know, cause I'm crazy myself or if it's, I just like um, that style of, I, I find it, I find it a little difficult to try to get inside somebody's mind and, and, and speak as their voice. I like telling the truth in music. So like there's a bit of lie there when you're like, all right, what would this person want to say? And you don't really have direction directly from the horse's mouth and you kind of end up doing it. But I, I've had songs that have come out that way mm. um, where it's like a song that I've, you know, written. And I've, I've also had it like, you know, it happened on this record where I wrote a song for a different artist, somebody else completely with the artist in the room. And I afterwards was like, hey, dude, like, I kind of think this is a boys like girls song. What do you think about me keeping that one? You know, so it works in works in both ways. Yeah, yeah, good. And when it comes to to writing for you, how do tracks tend to start off? Is it a, like a melody, a lyric, a, a riff? What what works for you? And it it's different. It's different every song. When I was a kid, it was like me on acoustic guitar up in my like childhood bedroom. Um, usually starting with like a melody and a riff. Sometimes these days it's like starting with a title, like with language. I had this idea that was like. We were, we, I had this idea when I was overseas that was like, I don't speak the language. And it was like kind of a lost in translation, like, no, 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 I don't speak the language. Like, I, I feel completely foreign in this place. And then it was kind of like, you know, you start writing a song and it becomes something different usually. And so like some things start with a title and you hear it in your head without having the riff yet. And everything sort of, sometimes it's like you have this like bed of music, like a track for three years and you're like mm. listening to it and you know there's other songs on this record that were like you know there was a riff or a track that existed sometimes like you produce the entire thing out you record the band you still don't have the lyrics and like two minutes before the record comes out you just put a vocal on it and hope it's good enough you know so i think every beast is different i mean it's like you know um i, I think that's what creates diversity in music i think the hardest way to do it is music first all the way you know i think that's a lot how like modern pop music is made is like it's like a, kind of a track and then you write yeah over the top of that and i don't usually participate in that form i think it's i, I think it's less honest mm -hmm. mostly because like when you have an idea and it's like this sort of infantile small idea in your brain and you it's nice to be able to take any path with it yeah. then have to box it into sort of like a mood. Cause when I produce records, it's very like, what does this guitar part say? Does this say angst or hope or sex or you're dreaming or I'm sad? Like, what is it? What is it saying with, without the lyrics at all? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? What does this synth part really say? It's like, I want it to feel some people look at me like I'm crazy when I'm in the studio. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm speaking in emotion instead of like real terms. So I'm just like, I need to feel desperation out of this drum part. And they're like, what the fuck does that mean? You know what I mean? And so, um, uh, you know, but the people who get that type of speak, you know, we can end up kind of like, you know, you speak, I mean, classical music said a lot. Jazz says a lot with no lyrics. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Um, when you come to create the lyrics for for your music, do you find it easy for the words to come to you, or or at times do you find it fairly difficult to find the right lyrics to fit the music? When I'm writing for other people, I find it really easy, really easy, mostly because I don't have to be the one to deliver that story. Yeah. When I find it, and 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 I I suppose my standards are less high. When it's me. I, there's some things that I wouldn't necessarily say, 
And if I wouldn't speak that way in real life, I so I tend to rewrite songs four or five times to make sure that everything's kind of punched up. If I'm like something sticks out to me, maybe when I was a little younger, I would I would hear something that stuck out to me is like, you know, when I listen back to our first two albums and I, I hear certain things that I say, I was like, that was literally the first thing that came to my mind. And there's beauty in that. But, you know, you sing it over and over and over and over. And there's some lines that you're like, man, I really wouldn't write that now. I, you know, I, it's harder when it's me because I want to make sure it's real and true and that the stories are authentic. Like I don't really want to go on stage and sing a made up story. You know, it's, I think it's important that it's true. So like if I have an idea for a song, but I haven't experienced said thing, right? Mm. So like I can tell that it's feeling an emotion. Maybe I got the idea from a movie or I have to dig until I find why it's true to me. And sometimes that takes years. Yeah, makes sense. Martin, it's been a pleasure having it's a been chat a pleasure. with you. Thank you for having me, man.